Hello and welcome to a special edition of Keystone Sports on For the Bloggy. I'm Jim Galante, along with Chris Buccanani. Chris, we're going to play a little game of Are You Buying? Got some trends that are going on in the first two games of the Penn State Nittany Lions season prior to this bye week. Want to see how serious you take these. Are you ready for me? Yes, sir. It's like the Amazon algorithm's got its hooks into me, Jim, because I think I'm going to be buying a lot today. Go ahead. All right. Well, let's start with this. Sack percentages. The sacks are way down for this team. They are ranked 89th in college football, way off where they were a year ago. You buying that as a trend, Chris? I think this is the toughest call of the topics we're going to cover today, Jim, for the pure reason that we've got such a small sample size to work from. But what are you going to do? You know, early bye week, you got to work with what you've got at your disposal. And if you go back and look at the two games Penn State has played, in the first game you've got Garrett Green, by the way, an absolute miserable loser. Like, I I can't say enough bad things about the West Virginia Mountaineers <laughs> program right now. Neil Brown should be fired. Garrett Green should be benched. I, they may just want to close down the program, honestly. But anyway, coming back to Penn State, that's a mobile quarterback who last season rushed for over 750 yards. So just keeping him contained was really one of the challenges for the defensive line. And, and that's a guy who you're going to struggle to bring to the ground necessarily. There were a lot of pressures. I thought the defensive line affected that game, but they didn't record any sacks. And then Bowling Green, you had a savvy sixth-year quarterback who was coming into the game with a smart offensive mind, uh, coordinating the game plan, which was to get the ball out quickly, move the pocket, roll Connor uh, Basilek out and avoid Penn State's dangerous edge rushers. So we not only have a small sample size, but I can give you a pretty reasonable qualifier from both of those games as to why you maybe don't get the sacks. On the other hand, this has become something of a trend, right? With Penn State having edge rushers who get hyped up going into the season, they get credited with a lot of hurries. They don't record a lot of sacks and most of them end up going on to be drafted high into the NFL. I've always thought going all the way back to the coach chaos days that even when we were rolling up big sack stats, and I felt like this was maybe the case at times last year, you know, we're compiling numbers in games where the sacks maybe don't mean as much, but in the situations where you need to deliver the most, we've come up a little bit short. So I guess just giving, given the history I'm going to have to be a buyer on this. I understand all the talk about disruption and pressures, but you know what teams that get a lot of actual sacks don't talk about, Jim? What's that? The number of pressures they're generating, <laughs> right? So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a hesitant buyer on that one. I'm not sure I'm buying. I just think there's enough talent that we will start to see the sacks, but I just can't imagine it being to the level we saw last year, and I think part of that is the concepts that Manny Diaz coached where he was coaching for those sacks, I'm not sure we're going to still see that like we did a year ago. All right. How about this, Chris? How about explosive plays? Penn State, again, small sample size, only two games, but they already have 14 explosive plays. That's plays greater than 20 yards through two weeks of the season. You buying into it? Take my money. Enthusiastic buyer. You look at the low numbers from last season, I think it was reasonable to just assume there would be some regression to the mean where you would just, by natural mathematics, end up with a few more explosive plays than we had last year. But then when you look at the first two games, the number of them, you pair and, and the way they happened, which was by design, and you pair that up with the fact that you spent a lot of money in the offseason to bring in an offensive coordinator for whom explosivity was his calling card. And also, not for nothing, you look at what's missing with the Kansas football program right now through the first few weeks of the season. I think that gives you enough data points to look at this and look at the talent on the roster and look at the long track record of Andy Kotelnicki and what he's able to achieve with his offensive design and say, yeah, this isn't just happenstance. This is a trend. We can feel pretty comfortable. We'll continue on into the season. So I'm buying that one. I am too, Chris, and you could just see Andy Kotelnicki. He does take shots, uh, throwing the ball down the field. And with this running game now, you we saw it in the Bowling Green game. Uh, Catron Allen, Nick Singleton combined for 
eight rushes over 10 yards. Some of those are going to go for 20. Now that's related a little bit to our next stat, which is the Penn State rushing game. Penn State is now gotten in the first two games averaged 228 yards a game rushing. That's the easily the highest in the James Franklin era. You're buying into that. Buy, buy, buy. Absolutely. Once again, enthusiastic buyer on this one, Jim. And that is very similar to the answer I gave on the last one, which is if you look at Andy Kotelnicki's history, you look at the kind of offense he wants to run, it's predicated on building everything off running the ball. And we've got two absolute stud running backs. You know, I wrote in the offseason for our friends here at For the Bloggy about how Penn State has very rarely had a pair of two runners share a career like Nick Singleton and Katron Allen are. You have to go all the way back to Lydell Mitchell and Franco Harris to really find a comparison for what we have in the backfield at Penn State right now. And through the first two weeks of the season, I think we're seeing that these guys are just going to pick up where they left off and really look like the best versions of themselves that we got during the Rose Bowl campaign of 2022. So once again, a little bit of an asterisk with the small sample size, but everything we know about coach and players leads me to be very confident that, yes, in fact, we're going to continue to have a very potent running attack at Penn State this season. For me, there's not even the asterisk there for the small sample size. Very and smart. we've got Kent State coming up. A chance to pad these numbers, Chris. I'm buying this one like crazy. All right. Finally, there's a negative one. Penalties per game. Penn State's ranked number 92 in the FBS with seven and a half penalties per game. That can't continue, Chris. It cannot, and I'm going to sell, I think, over the course of 12 games that it will not, only because since he got here in 2014, when he was working with a roster that was riddled with sanction issues, just 65 scholarship players, James has consistently done a very good job coaching disciplined football teams. So I've got two games versus 10 years worth of sample size in this one. And I just remain very confident and, and comfortable that over the course of the entire regular season, what we've come to expect of a, out of a James Franklin coach team will be what we get out of this year's squad. And I think the kind of penalties they got in like defensive offsides, Chris, are things that they could be coached out of them. I think it'll be a point of emphasis by James Franklin. I'm with you. I'm not buying that one. I think it'll all balance out through the rest of the season. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. But that is it for this special edition of Keystone Sports on For the Bloggy.